I want to tell you a story about how subtle changes in movement can create measurable changes in performance, changes in performance we, we didn't even predict. But before that, let me tell you something really good about testing that I want you to know. You could practice any test we've developed and probably learn to cover the metric a little bit quicker than if you don't practice the test, authentically change your training culture, and then we measure a change on a test. Let me give you a quicker example. Uh, one of my friends has a son who's into rock climbing, and he took off the summer season, and uh, since his son is very into his, his physical preparation for the sport of rock climbing, we've always known what his flexed and extended arm hang is, and by not rock climbing for the summer season, the flexed arm hang went down about 45 seconds. I didn't say it went to 45 seconds, it went down 45 seconds, so that means this kid had a really great flexed arm hang. Well, it went down when he quit climbing. Now, there's two ways to get that test score back up. He could simply go to the garage, find a pull-up bar, and practice his flexed arm hang. Or he could resume the climbing schedule and training and practice that he was originally involved in. Now, organically, his flexed arm hang is going to become more robust and measurably better if he just gets back to rock climbing. Or he could go to the garage twice a day and practice that flexed arm hang and get that 45 seconds back. If he gets this 45 seconds back, I'm not sure he resumes his previous success in climbing same day. But if he resumes his previous success in climbing, the flexed arm hang is there. I urge you, we built these tests, but if you continue to practice the test or do activities that are so similar to the test, that they might get better on the metric and it won't represent the culture or the change or the adaptation that's occurred. So we, we develop tests not so you can get a good score and blog about it. We develop tests so you know where you're failing. And as soon as you remove the failure off that test, hopefully by not practicing it, we know that that little biomarker was set to identify a much bigger problem that would take us a lot longer to measure if we measured every aspect of the problem. But we found the bottleneck. If that got worse, this got worse. So we use these little tests. Now, we've always been very impressed when your movement screen score goes from, say, a 12 to a 14 slash 16, or say on a forward reach motor control screen or a Y balance test, you uh, had a four centimeter difference and now it's gone. And people look at that and they're like, hey, whoop, I mean, this, this is, that's just a warm up or whatever. Well, not until we started doing the FCS, looking at your power, your carry, your balance, your coiled spring, your energy storing, until we started doing our performance test same day, we didn't even know how big a difference there was. So we had a, had a pro athlete come through who had actually had an ACL reconstruction on one knee, but we had a positive Faber test on the side, just a stiff hip. And I look at the Faber flexion, abduction, external rotation, as a micro pattern. It's representative when the hip and the pelvis and the core just don't play well together. And so it wasn't my job to predict if that stiff hip was actually a contributing factor to the ACL. It's a chicken or the egg argument and past is past. But I want to gain perspective from that. So this athlete really didn't have any other measurable problems. And when we did the right corrective and a little bit of therapy and got that hip to open up, we surely enough saw that movement screen go up a couple of points. And we saw that four centimeters on his single leg balance, a partial pistol, if you will, go away. That little left right. Little numbers changed. Fireworks go off. Bunch of FMS geeks think they did something. Well, we've always thought there was a more tangible representation of your expression of energy if we clean this up because this is showing balance. It's showing harmony. It's showing that your gears are working together instead of grinding. So same day when these two things changed, we had a previous carry test. And our carry test, you can look it up online, it's like 75% of your body weight split into each hand. So we got a heavy farmer's carry, and what you're carrying doesn't weigh as much as you, but it's about three quarters of what you weigh, and we divided that weight into each hand. Walk as far as you can. We're gonna time you, we're gonna look at your distance, and you're gonna do like a 25 foot figure eight. So we got those compressed turns that are really gonna rob a lot of energy from you, because that's, that's a pretty hard walk to do. But we didn't expect to see what we saw. 
30% improvement in carrying a heavy weight same day. And the only thing that changed was two points on the screen and four centimeters on the reach. How the hell can that happen? Because that looks like we had a huge strength gain, huge work capacity gain. Well, how can I explain that to you? Go put on a pair of jeans, two sizes too small, and do the same carry test, or do your standing long jump or any other performance test. And you'll find that when we rob you from natural fluid range of motion and sort of restrict you a little bit, your performance goes down. It's a sensory and motor thing. You can't feel as well or fluid, and you can't move as well or fluid. Take it again. What if I tape up one ankle and have you jump or carry something? That's going to shave something off. So I didn't add anything to this person's strength. This person had the same horsepower in the morning they had in the afternoon. The problem was all of that horsepower was focused on a carry, whereas before a lot of that horsepower was wasted overcoming an unnecessarily stiff hip and an ankle that wasn't moving that good and a core that couldn't do what it was supposed to do because it was too busy compensating for what the hip would not. So sometimes when a butterfly flaps its wings over here, we get a hurricane over here. And uh, you can't talk about it unless you measure both. And we did, so we do. For more information, visit functionalmovement.com.